Welcome to the League of Women Voters of the La Crosse Area's 97th Annual Meeting and Review. Usually our meetings are a time to get together, to share stories, to celebrate our accomplishments and plan for the future. This year, while we can't get together in person for a beverage and a good meal, we can and should celebrate our many accomplishments and be excited for our future. This past year, saw a revival of interest in league work locally, statewide, and nationally. Maybe it was the anniversary of the 19th Amendment, or the league's 100th birthday, or the upcoming 2020 national election. Whatever it was, our league's membership increased by almost 60 people, leaving us at close to 170 members. Why is that important? While the League has a reputation of being an organization of integrity and grit, it is through our membership that we can actually make a difference, especially at the local level. And make a difference we did. This year, our League's membership was more than awesome. You marched in parades, registered voters, sat in the heat of the county fair handing out voter information to adults and stickers to the kids. You contacted prospective community leaders and put their information in vote411.org. You hosted candidate forums and wrote to your legislators. You learned about the ERA, the La Crosse County Child Protective Services and the history of African-American suffrage in La Crosse during our Lunch and Learns, and about the effect of climate change on our community through joint forums with the Dane County League. Some of you attended meetings on the state level to learn about issues affecting our lives and how we can make positive impacts. Others taught us old dogs new tricks like how to Zoom, tweet, and podcast making our message more accessible to more people. Your membership and support was important on other league levels. This year, national and state leagues were at the forefront on the fight for fair political maps, for clean water and air, for accurate voting lists, for voting security, and accurate census and mail-in paper ballots. While they fought in the courts and on the lobby floor, our local membership took these causes to the people. This year, two more fair maps referendums were passed in Trempolo and Monroe counties. A big thank you goes to Deb Luchin and Pam Knutson for helping their community partners work through the process and providing a means for county residents to gather, infor gather information to guide in their vote. In addition, our members have been involved in getting information on the importance of completing the census to college and university students, an often undercounted population. While this effort was impeded by the COVID-19 closing the campuses, the message continues. As mentioned before, this year being an important election year with local, state, and national races, our league joined the vote411.org effort to provide a one-shop, nonpartisan candidate information website. Members researched local issues, devised questionnaires, and contacted all La Crosse County candidates from school board to mayors. As a result, for the first time, Community voters could go to a website to find accurate information on candidates running in these races. Much was accomplished this year, but much still needs to be done. The board and committees have been busy planning for 2021. The annual meeting report, available for download on our website, gives a complete record of the past year. I'm very proud of our league, board members, com committee chairs, and membership, and their accomplishments. But enough of looking back. Robin Schmidt, how will we keep our members involved and in making a difference in the coming year? 
That's a great question, Mary. But before I try to answer that, I want to first extend a big thank you for your efforts as our league president. Being president is a lot like being a gourmet chef. You have to keep each of the pots going, making sure there's enough in each pot, not burning anything, and having all the dishes done at the same time. Your hard work and thoughtfulness are critical to the success of our league, and we thank you for all you do for us and the league. So back to your question. Like any well-run organization, we have groups of individuals working on various key topics. Our board is comprised of elected positions as well as league members who often serve as committee chairs. At the monthly board meetings, we set program direction, address budget issues, and support the work of the various committees. The Program Development Committee brings us informative and educational speakers, special events, and lunch and learn gatherings. The Communications and Technology Committee produces our website, newsletter, and Facebook page. The Public Relations and Marketing Committee maintains a database and a system for publicizing events and issuing media releases. And our Membership Committee works hard to ensure all members feel welcome, potential members have information about our organization, and tracks membership to assess needs and interests. The Voter Services and Education Committee works to ensure all eligible voters are registered to vote and helps get the vote out when elections occur. I want to give a special thanks to the committee chairs. Sheila Garrity on Program Development, Laura Milner on Voter Services, Nora Garland on Communications and Technology, Pam Knudsen on Public Relations and Marketing, and Kathy Mulliner on Membership. Without your leadership and hard work, we would not have the amazing accomplishments of this past year. A committee's success, however, is highly dependent on volunteer members who work collaboratively with each other and with partners throughout the community. If you're not on a committee, I wanna encourage you to reach out to our committee chairs and learn more about how your talents can help. Joining a committee is a great way for us to learn new ideas, for you to get to know other league members and to give back to our community. We know this coming year will have unique challenges and your help meeting those challenges will help us continue to be successful. And speaking of successes, Chris Haskell, one of our tireless and talented members of the Voter Services Committee, is going to share with you some of the unique and innovative efforts the Voter Services Committee and others have completed this past year. Take it away, Chris. As you heard from Mary and Robin, Voter Services had another great year in spite of it being truncated. The numbers in the voter services section of the annual report verify this. I hope that you will take special note of the number of volunteer hours put in by league members and our partners at literally hundreds of events. Nothing happens without this dedication. It means that we can have events like the two we had at UWL with our partner, the College Election Engagement Project. Between the Battle of the Dorms in November and a spring drive, we registered and educated hundreds of university students. We also, along with the Driftless Voter Coalition and the Central Feminist Club, developed our own Get Out the Vote program, which we took into area high schools and presented at assemblies to all seniors, re reaching hundreds of them. But it isn't always about reaching hundreds. We were at Recovery Avenue with our partner, the YWCA, when a gentleman came up to our table and said, I want to register. I wanted to vote last time, but I was homeless and it was just too difficult. Then as he proudly pulled his driver's license out of his wallet, he said, now I have my own place and I want to vote. Including him, I think we only registered about three people that day. It's not always about the numbers. Sometimes it's the stories behind the numbers. So how can we channel all that pent up dedication going forward? That is of course unpredictable. And things could look different for the August election than they do for the November one. We are currently working on a series of frequently asked questions about all kinds of voting topics. The questions will be answered in a variety of formats, including YouTubes that we will produce and will be starring a diverse group of area folks. As we roll these out on our Facebook page and website, we'd ask you to share them widely. If you're interested in being a part of the production, let me know. We have also reconfigured our high school program to be totally virtual. If you have a connection with a high school 
or an individual high school senior that you think should see it, let me know. If events open up later in the year, we will let you know. And of course, keep putting up and taking down those everyone vote signs. Our work is inspiring, important, and gets results. Your dedication to it makes the difference. Thank you. Thank you, Chris and Robin, for all you do for our league and community. As you reminded us, members are a key to success and we are so grateful for all they do. We are especially grateful to members Marilyn McElligott and Lenore Rodman for 50 years of dedication to the league's principles and purpose. Thank you, Marilyn and Lenore, and to the other 11 members who have supported the league for half a century or more. While active members are vital to our, our successes, there are others who help make our mission of engaging voters and defending democracy possible. Like our volunteer board members who dedicate their time and talents to organizing and planning everything that goes into making our organization work. Untold hours and effort goes into each event, registration, and communication our league participates in. I'd like to express a special thank you to Maureen Kinney, who has spent many, many, many years on the board in a variety of roles, the most recent being our secretary. And to Pam Knudsen, who has kept our message in the public eye as our public relations director. In addition, thank you to Deb Luchin for being my mentor this year and for all the work you did as adjunct board member organizing fair maps and vote 411. Thank you all for your services then, now, and hopefully in the future. Also, without public support and recognition, our league would be irrelevant. We thank you to the organizations who partner with us and help spread our word. The special thanks goes to Driftless Voter Coalition for the technical expertise and added outreach for our voter services. Also, thank you to the individuals and groups who have supported us financially through gifts and grants, especially to those who donated to us on Giving Tuesday. The La Crosse Community Foundation for their matching gifts and generous grant, and the Bob and Jean Mark Family Fund for their support of voter services and education. The coming year will present many challenges for our league membership and mission. If we can survive plague, isolation, and murder hornets, we can and will survive anything. Now, more than ever in this divided country, we need to spread our nonpartisan message to all people, that people matter, that all eligible voters should vote, that our environment must be kept healthy and democracy is something that we should fight for. For 96 years, the La Crosse League has been fighting for these same things and with your involvement, we will fight for 96 more. Thank you. And remember to fill out your ballots and hit send. Stay safe, stay active, and we will see you soon. <laughs>